Yo, and welcome back to another episode on Kubernetes. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the security stuff that I've been learning recently um, around the whole security as a service model um, and my reasons to why I want to try and adapt or build a proof of concept with Kubernetes to utilize the security as a service model. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about that, but also show a quick example or as I should say, a demo of utilizing OWASP with Kubernetes. So as an engineer, one of the challenges, or I should say biggest challenge is staying up to date with technology. And for me, it's one of my main challenges. And on a daily basis, I'm always following blog posts and latest news articles. And one of the main ones is Kubernetes. So my Twitter feed, for example, has got a lot of latest information around Kubernetes and um, some of the modules that people are releasing or plugins or um, just ch things that we can add to Kubernetes to improve it. Um, and one of the main things for me is security and recently I've been doing a lot of studying or a lot of as well as building a proof of concept for security as a service. Um, now it's awesome that we have Kubernetes and we can deploy stuff like and it's really quick and it manages itself but one of the things that that's kind of worries me is security and you know we can deploy all these services onto Kubernetes or as a platform as a service just deploy them but one of the issues that I see is, is that we don't know what we're deploying. We don't know potentially what vulnerabilities we're deploying. Um, and one of the main things for me from the security as a service uh, proof of concept that I'm wanting to build is how can we make it easy to take away that layer of security analysis, so vulnerability analysis from engineers? How can we um, automate that so that when we deploy a service, it's there, it's being scanned, we know there's vulnerabilities in it, we can either stop it from going or we can push it up there into the world but know that there's that um, vulnerabilities in it and then we can get them fixed as soon as possible. So one of my proof of concepts was taking OWASP um, and using that on Kubernetes and I was able to build a demo and the demo was utilizing cron jobs. So in today's video I'm going to take you through that now and show you a quick example of using OWASP to take a service that's running on the PaaS or in general and scan it. I'm using Minikube uh, again to do all my local development to test and play with and build all these wacky proof of concepts. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is take you through what I've done so far. So the code's already built so I'm going to take you through it line by line just to give you an understanding of what it does. So this is it so far. So we have uh, what we call a cron job and this is in Kubernetes. So what it does is we have a name to start off with and we call it node go OWASP scan. Um, and node go, if anyone doesn't know what it is, it's a tool that is built specifically for OWASP to have all these vulnerabilities in so that OWASP can give you an example of all the vulnerabilities that it can pull out. Um, and it's Node.js app, hence node. Um, you can pass in a schedule, so a cron job type specific um, syntax. So as an example, I'm saying every minute do a scan. Um, obviously this is unperformant, maybe you'd want to do it every night, every couple of nights, or based on a version. Say if you've done one version, you've released another version, but you only want a scan to happen once for that specific version, that can happen. Concurrency policy. If the scan is happening, then I don't want it to create a new pod. I want it to wait for this job to finish and then decide to scan again or whatever. Um, successful job history limit. I keep this to one because obviously if I'm going to have so many uh, of these scans happening, I want it to be tidy. I don't want to have a whole list of jobs. Now you can clean them up, but then you've also got to think about um, essentially where you're going to export those, those logs of of that stuff so maybe into Prometheus to create a nice Grafana dashboard or maybe into Slack or whatever it is you use or somewhere to just store these logs. Um, failed job history limit I've set to zero because you should really care that it's failed but in my case I don't care right now. Um, and so then we go into the job template. Now what we do is we reference um, Zap to Docker stable so we're taking the stable release of OAuth Zap um, and I'm spawning this new shell because I need to pass in some args, but I also need to throw an exit code so that the pod doesn't keep rebuilding itself. Because with OWASP, it doesn't give you an exit code. Um, with Kubernetes, jobs don't essentially have a way to just stop a job just like that without 
having an exit code. So in my case, I have to pass in this exit code at the end. So the example is, is we spawn a new shell, we say zap CLI, we do a quick scan, we set it to self-contained so that it's all inside the Docker container. We set a spider so that it can crawl through the website and then I don't want an API authentication key set on my OWASP container so I've disabled that. <clears throat> and then finally, um, uh, the URL that we want to scan, so nodegoat.herokuapp.com. Now, image pool policy is always, OWASP is massive, it's like over a gig in a, a Docker image. So maybe always isn't the best, maybe it should be based on the version. Um, and then we give it the name again, so node go or scan. I haven't set any resources because I feel that I didn't need to. Um, set the DNS policy termination grace to 30 seconds because we want it to terminate within 30 seconds. Um, and restart policy is never. So if it does fail that pod, then uh, for some sort of reason, maybe it can pull down the image or um, maybe this URL here was not available. In that case, it would have failed and then it would have tried again. In this case, I didn't want it to restart. So this is the job. Cool, so now that I've taken you through this uh, quick overview of how a job works or and how I've built this proof of concept for OWASP, what I'm gonna do now is deploy it to Kubernetes. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I have this one file here that I created which you saw in Visual Studio Code. Um, and I'm going to use kubectl create-f OWASP job YAML. And what this is going to do is going to take that information and deploy it to Kube, Kubernetes. Um, now eventually I could create a Helm chart for this or I could merge it into a Helm chart, um, like a Helm repository. Um, but for right now, just because it's one file, I'm just going to do kubectl create-f OWASP job .yaml. Cool, so it says that the cron job has been created, so I can look at that and I can see there's a cron job waiting to happen. So in about a minute it should start to run. Awesome, so the cron job has executed itself as you can see here. So what we can do is look at the dashboard and we should be able to see a job running. Wicked. So what we'll do now is we can see that it's pulled down the um, zap to docker stable image and it's created the, ca the container and it started it. So if we look at the logs, we can see the scan is started, which is wicked. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a break while this scan starts to happen because it's going to take a while to scan. So I'll be back in a bit. One hour later. So the scan is complete, which is wicked. Um, Unfortunately, I got through a bit of a, an issue with Heroku from scanning the node go on Heroku, which caused uh, my IP to get blocked so I couldn't actually scan the site after about 60%. So in that case, I decided to change it up a bit. Um, I decided to take a chart off the uh, the stable Helm repository that lives on GitHub or on the QBAPS website. Um, so I took an example called uh, DokuWiki. Um, which is running on my uh, Kuber local Kubernetes cluster with Minikube right now, as you can tell. Um, and the scan took about, so even though it took about an hour to actually do a scan in total, this one took about 20 minutes. As you can see, um, this is the log, and you can see the logs that it scanned, etc. And look at that, we found three issues with OWASP um, for Doku Wiki, which is cool. So that's a proof of concept to show that OWASP scan works um, and it's great to see that there are some logs which is cool and it showed some potential vulnerabilities um, with docu wiki um, remote os command injection which is a high risk apparently um, i look forward to trying them out so yeah awesome guys so that was just a quick uh, proof of concept of how i decided to get OWASP um, Zap running on Kubernetes um, from an automated uh, perspective and that's with um, using cron jobs. Now this is this is only just one tiny bit of the security as a service type of stuff that I've been playing with and learning about um, 
and there's other things like uh, Claire, which you could use to do Docker image layer scanning, um, and essentially utilizing other things like SNCC for Node.js, where you could scan a third party uh, Node module uh, dependencies. Um, as well as that, there's also the whole thing around security at the forefront of the um, Kubernetes uh, platform as a service type of stuff. So things using like K8 guards to have some sort of um, security rule set to to know that your Kubernetes cluster is well secure or to um, secure to an extent that is. Um, so yeah, OWASP was one of my um, concepts that I wanted to to smash out and get working. I am debating if to create a Helm chart for it and open source that. It would really be just the, the job itself and a values file that essentially gave different things, such as if you wanted to do a front end journey scan or a, uh, an API scan and um, making it so you can choose when to scan, etc. As always, guys, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.